I just love the big sister voice with Zoom. I know. Yeah, yeah. it's a bit scary. But uh, <laughs> Jake, thank you so much for making the time and uh, really appreciate you volunteering for your own story and your pain experience. And I thought today would be interesting to go through a bit of how you've been coping, how you've been managing and, and moving forward, um, what's, what the process has been like. And hopefully this can give some insights into the consultation, the clinical conversation. So Jake, tell us what's been going on. So uh, thanks, man. Uh, um, thanks for jumping on with me. It's, uh, it, it, I, this is as much for me to just uh, get, you know, get some of my thoughts out there to somebody as much as it is, you know, here and uh, how you would do things too. Um, yeah, so I've been dealing with a S1 radiculopathy for five months now. Um, so since late April, I guess is, is kind of when it started, um, have been through lots of up and downs with it, uh, you know, neurological signs, all that, um, lots of pain, <laughs> um, and, you know, emotional roller coasters and all that. So, um, that's kind of where it's at. It started back. Yeah, it's like I said, back in late April, um, and gradually, but slowly, it's very slowly getting better. It's a long time, five months. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's the longest I've ever dealt with anything. So it's been a learning experience for sure. Yeah. So late April, what was happening around the, the time of the onset? Um, well, in all honesty, it was not a whole lot. If I, you know, I would say I was, I was feeling pretty beat up around that time frame. Um, I was actually on a deload week in my training, um, because I had been feeling pretty fatigued, pretty run down at the time. Um, back had been hurting quite a bit. And, uh, I did some nerve mobilizations that week. And, uh, and the reason I did, was doing that was because for some time period before that, uh, every time I would hip hinge, I would deal with this like deep pain in my glute, um, my right side on my right glute. Um, uh, and it, it kind of all signs were pointing to it being nerve related in terms of like, uh, you know, slump and any kind of like that sort of tension stuff would, would set it off. Uh, so, so I did some nerve mobilizations in that deal week and next day woke up and my like leg was just on fire and like whatever I did there was, it was not happy. Um, and it, so I was getting a lot of shooting pains. I couldn't really extend my knee when I would walk. Um, so even from a standing position, that was pretty bad. Uh, and that was, a uh, yeah, you know, a little shocking because I, you know, definitely was like not something I would have expected to happen. Um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much where it was at. I will say, I think probably going, the only like major event I can think of is like maybe going back to February. I was doing a, it was about a month prior, I guess, to this all starting. I was doing a squat here. And well, I remember on like my final rep, I felt the best way to describe it is I felt like my back flexed on the way up, like my torso was still vertical, but like my back, like was literally flexing, um, a sensation I've never felt before in my life. It was like, I was doing pelvic tilts while trying in the middle of a back squat. Um, and I had some like kind of burning back pain that day, but it went away in like a few hours and I didn't think anything else of it. Um, was, and, and yeah, and then like, that was the only thing I could think of other than that was feeling pretty beat up a month later. And the, then this all started. That was the first time you noticed that kind of weird motion, that flexion. As yeah. You I've coming up. I, yeah. Cause I was distinctly thinking, I was like, I have never felt that before in my life. Um, which, you know, of course my mind's going wild now thinking like, I wonder if that's when the disc herniated in my back. Mm. Um, if that's, I wonder if that's what that felt like. I, I don't know. It's speculation, but well, maybe. 
because it definitely that, probably didn't happen. It probably didn't happen during my nerve mobilizations. Yeah, yeah. You'd hope not, unless there was some really intense ones. <laughs> yeah. With that, that from that moment mentioned like around late Feb, how was training post then and, and function? Yeah. Um, it, I mean, it led me into a deload a month later. So it probably wasn't great. I mean, I've, I remember the where I had the most trouble um, as I would do squats and I go and jump on the hamstring curl machine. I have a seated hamstring curl. Uh, and I could not put out any force on that hamstring curl machine that day that it happened. Um, about a week later was the next time I tried it. Uh, and it, I still couldn't get to like full loads that I was using prior. And then I think within like two, three weeks, I was back to feeling pretty normal on that, but I was feeling some of those kind of like that nerve tension when I would get into that seated position and then it would take like a set to kind of loosen up, so to speak. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think I gradually did feel a little more like beat up, beat up. And then that's when I decided, all right, we're just going to deload. We're going to take a break here. Um, because I remember I was doing, I think I did a deadlift the week prior or something and it felt like crap, um, in my back. And I was like, all right, well, let's just, let's just rest for a little bit and see if we can drop some fatigue. Um, yeah. So there's that. Yeah. Different kind of loads around that time. And you'd respected that you needed a bit of a deload afterwards. Yeah. Interesting. And with the, with, so you mentioned February, the week before that squat moment, you were noticing the back was a bit sore and sensitive from the deadlifts as well or? Uh, no so that was the week before after. the deload right, yeah right, week right. before the deload now i you know i dealt with i was dealing with back pain for almost all of 2020 um worse in the morning uh so, like pretty bad in the morning and then we kind of gradually loosen up as the day went on but i would like wake up every morning feeling pretty achy uh every day and so i don't know i think i just kind of learned to ignore it a little bit Yes, it's kind of how I how I deal with it because I just used to having it. Um, so hard to say exactly how I felt in that time period in between because I kind of just carried on. Yeah, you got a you had a certain tolerance level already built up. Yeah, so it wasn't too big of a difference. It seemed. Yeah, it was just it was what I expected. Yeah, you know, so I just kind of went on with it. After the, the nerve mobs, tell me, you mentioned for that first day, it felt like fire on the right side. So like the right leg kind of yeah. sensations. And then from then on, what was the process? And so um, I could not really do anything hip flexion related for three weeks or so. Uh, like even like any sort of bending down wasn't happening. Um, everything was like very, very squatty. I <laughs> keep my it's vertical torso, very vertical. Um, and then three weeks in, I woke up one day and my cat, my right calf felt extremely tight. Like it, it just felt like I had, it felt like I had doms in, it, in all honesty. Um, and I realized I couldn't push off of it. And so I lost all strength in my right calf from that point forward around week three. And I was limp. I was limping. Um, every time I, like every time I take a step on that side, I would start limping. Um, and then my outer toe on that right side went numb as well. Um, and I lost my Achilles reflex. What was going through your mind at this time? I imagine myself going a bit crazy during this time um, if I was a healthcare professional. Let's get an MRI. Yeah. <laughs> um, because we're probably going to go need to, we probably at least need to get a neuro consult at this point. Um, it, the fact that it happened three weeks in and it like changed and it wasn't there before made me a little, it, it scared me. I mean, I like it, that, that was pretty scary to be like, oh, oh crap. Um, and all honesty, like, I was coping with the pain pretty well, 
I like, I wasn't really going to the neuro looking for, um, from a pain perspective, I was like, I don't want long-term damage to this nerve. Like I want to make sure that I can walk around, that I can train, that I can be active going forward. Mm -hmm. Um, and so like, that's why I ended up having a consult with a neuro around week nine, um, got my MRI at week six, got consult at week nine. Um, and yeah, but that, that was pretty, that was pretty scary. Um, there for a while, like I've never experienced like trying my best and giving everything to like try and contract and push into something and just, it just not being there. Hmm. Um, it was, it was weird Hmm. to say the least. Yeah. You lost that, that muscle kind of function, the strength, the power. Yeah. it, It just, I was sitting there and I would stare at it and I would touch it and I'd be like, contract and it just it just wouldn't move hmm. um and so i mean I, and luckily like i found that i could still contract fairly well with my knee bent um so i had some calf function there but not enough to like walk around and be able to push off pretty well limping around for a little bit during yeah. This time. yeah how was generally um training modifications as well with all that was um, going on I imagine yeah been, that would have been the the focus for sure yeah <laughs> yeah i i didn't do anything lower body for about six weeks just didn't really feel comfortable moving yeah. um in that sense so a lot of upper body stuff um splitting the days to like get myself out here and be moving so i wouldn't just lay in bed because I did feel like I felt best laying down on my, um, on my back. Mm-hmm. And so I would end up, obviously I would just lay in, I'd be laying in bed working on my computer and I would have kind of, I wouldn't have a whole lot of pain there, but I didn't want to be spending all day in bed. So I try, I tried to get myself out here as much, you know, to at least once a day or so. Um, so six weeks upper body only, um, after that, just kind of like really probably playing around with things for another month or so, uh, just this kind of body weight exploring around, nothing really structured. Um, and then I kind of started feeling okay squatting to like a bench. So got the bench out and started working with that. I have a pair of BFR straps over here at the house. So threw those on and just started doing a bunch of high rep work, slow, slow and controlled, whatever felt good. Um, basically just trying to minimize any, <laughs> any damage I could there with, with losses. Um, uh, and that, that's pretty much been, that was that gradually felt a little better, kind of like moving a little more comfortably. So maybe over the next month or so, I managed to get myself, you know, like I can squat to full depth now, um, without, without issue. I could, I can kind of deadlift sumo, but I can't do anything in a conventional stance where my feet are underneath me. Um, I guess, I think I just need more knee bend and, um, I can sort of do some cardio on the bike and the rower here and there. And then after a bit of time, it kind of flares up or what happens with the, the bike? Uh, um, well, the rower, I can't extend my leg all the way. Uh, the bike has been a little hit or miss. I actually just got on it on Saturday for the first time and felt decent. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess to throw a little more backstory at this, I... What I got to a point where most of the shooting pain was gone. So I wasn't getting any of the like zaps and zings and stuff like that. But what I was mostly dealing with and what I'm currently still kind of dealing with is this like constant ache in my like glute and upper hamstring that will, if I'm not on any sort of like anti-inflammatory, it feels like it just kind of engulfs my whole leg. Um, it, like the best way I get thing I can describe it is like compressive wrap around my upper thigh. Um, and, but if I take like, IV, if I take like 400 milligrams of ibuprofen or I'll take a couple of Excedrin, I 
can walk around and have like no pain whatsoever. Uh, so I figured that out and that, that was very nice to kind of keep me moving. Um, but it's been weird. Cause it's like, I want to, if I take a couple of Excedrin, I can come in here and I can deadlift 225 uh, pounds, but without it, I struggle to unload the bar. And so, so it's like pretty wildly different. Um, and I didn't want to keep taking that twice, a, you know, once, twice a day for prolonged periods of time for, you know, instead reasons. So I ended up getting an epidural injection on Monday and, or not my, sorry, last Tuesday, last Tuesday, I got an epidural injection and that for the past week made it to where I could sit. So before I could walk around and stuff, but even with anti-inflammatories, I could not sit. Um, like I would have to like lay back in our car, like lean, recline myself back. Um, and with this, I've had, I still have a lot of pain kind of walk. I've had pain walking around, but I can sit for however long I need to, like I'm sitting right now and I have no issues. Um, so that's kind of changed things a little bit. And that allowed me to get on the bike and kind of mess around there with that. Um, and then today is the first day since getting that injection that I feel I have felt actually pretty decent. Like I can sit, I was able to kind of kind of walk around today. I mowed the grass for an hour and a half without any issue, which normally would leave me laying on the couch for a good 45 minutes afterwards. Um, and so today was a good day. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That would have been a very nice change after all these yeah. kind of ups and downs during the journey. So yeah. it seems to be what I'm hearing is that there is an inflammatory component and that's why you recognize the epidural might've been a helpful option with the consultation process as well with, with the, the neuro yeah. Or doctor. Yeah. Or? Well, yeah. Whenever, um, well, with the neuro, the neuro basically told me the having surgery will likely help the pain, but if, you know, if it's the motor function you're worried about, I really can't promise you anything. Um, so it really just comes down to call me when you can't deal with it. Um, or if the neuro symptoms get a lot worse and right around the time that I saw him, I got, I started to get kind of like glimmers that my calf was coming back, like just the slightest of glimmers. So I was like, all right, I'm going to ride it out. Cause my rule throughout this whole thing has been as long as you're seeing progress, no matter how small it is, you're going to keep riding it out. Um, and keep trying to see some progress. So I did. And then I ended up getting my, my calf completely back. So I have no motor weakness anymore. I have no numbness anymore. And, um, probably around month three, three and a half ish in there was where I recognized that ibuprofen was really helping me. Um, up to that, up before that, I really wasn't using anything. Um, but like I, around month three, it just started to like wear on me a lot more, just have being in pain that long, not that being something I just wasn't used to. Um, it was just kind of taking a mental toll on me. So I was like, I just need to feel normal. And so I would, I took an ibuprofen and it like actually made me feel really normal. So, um, kept taking it. And so that was where I, the dramatic effect I was having with that made me think, okay, there probably is an inflammatory component to this. And so maybe an epidural will be useful there too. Like logically that seemed to make sense to me that it might be. And it seems to be working and helping. Today it That's does. Yeah. <laughs> Today it does. Uh, last week I was a little, I, I was, last week I was wondering because mm -hmm. it, it was pretty minimal in terms of like effects. Um, and the doc, the pain management doctor I saw had said like, it's like, you will probably start seeing something within like two days. Um, and, but I have also heard people say like, Oh, it can take up to a week to two weeks to really feel something. So I kind of didn't know exactly what it was. Um, but yeah, it, we'll see how it goes. But right now I'm, I'm optimistic. Just to cover other kind of medical history, history of surgeries. None. No, no. You've had back no. pain before, not to this kind of presentation or. Yeah. 
nothing like this before. Um, only like, hey, I've had back a few back strains here and there. Um, one kind of like pretty large one in like 2015 or so that laid me up for a few weeks. Um, but no neuro signs with that. Uh, this one, and I've been, you know, just off and on back pain. And then last year was kind of a pretty constant feeling like my body was moving pretty ratchety and slow and stuff like that. Um, the interesting thing is like when the leg pain started, I haven't had a day of back pain since the only, the only back pain I have is like when I flex, I get this like pulling feeling in my lower back, uh, like a really sharp stretch, which is something I'm not used. It's different than anything I've kind of felt before, but I don't know if that's me just not moving as much as I'm used to, or if that's something from maybe the, the thing that's going on. No. And, um, so the motor kind of control is back for the most part. It's more the, yeah. Instead of yeah, position, I still, still yeah. yeah, I still don't have a reflex um, in my in my ankle, but motor, like motor control wise, yeah, I'm fine. I can, I, it's probably more endurance now than anything that, but it, it's pretty minimal. It doesn't, it doesn't make me feel like it's weaker. There's definitely not a noticeable difference. My hamstring probably still feels a little weaker on my uh, right side than my left, um, but yeah, that's about it. And the biggest concern was the loss of function in the long term. That was one of your yeah yeah yeah. That was the big that was the big thing. I was that was the big thing then. I mean, now I think after having been in pain so long, I'm like, all right, I'm I'm done being in pain. Like I'm I'm over this. I, I'm I'm ready for like pain to be. I don't mean not I deal with pain, but like, I'm ready for pain to at least be enough to where I can kind of just ignore it and move on with my day. And I, I have a hard time ignoring it whenever it kind of ramps up on me. So the, the current, um, kind of sensations that are bothering you the most would be as, as of say today, because you've had a bit, yeah, a big ache in my glute. Master. Yeah. So, right here, we can sit this down. Give me a look here. Um, so kind of like right here in my glute and then just at the top of my hamstring, it'll go right there. Um, and worse if I do any sort of like sitting down or not sitting down, but like bending down. So um, let me switch to my AirPods real quick and I'll be able to yeah. kind of show you a little better. Yeah. I'm going to try and switch this out real quick. Can you hear me? Yes. Ooh. Can you hear me? Yes. You can hear me? Right. Yes, I can hear you. Sorry about that. I think I... Whatever I, whatever I hit there, didn't, didn't agree. All right, let's see if I can get this set right. Um, yeah, so, see me okay there? Yep. Cool. Um, yeah, so if I, let's say, want to just pick this thing up off the ground, um, you see it like, my knee just like kind of automatically bends. That's just kind of what I have gone there. Um, and as I do that, I feel some like really like an intense stretch in my back right here. Um, and I mean, I've tried trying to just kind of like, I try to hinge and like right there, I'm feeling a really, really sharp pain in my hip um, that just kind of forces my knee to buckle mm -hmm. on me. And then I can kind of come through like that um, and i mean then that that right there is kind of no pain and you know if i just that right there is quite a bit mm -hmm. um so the yeah. difference there was you were leaning a little bit more on the first one and 
trying to be yeah. more conventional in the just so I can see the front on even as you are now. Yeah. 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 So if I, I pretty much like shift all yeah. the way over here to my left. Um, and if I try to go to my right, my tor like I have to drop my right shoulder and, and kind of come in and kind of do that. But trying to do anything here, it's just like my leg is not even under my control, it seems. Mm, kind of um, yeah. flexes need to get out of the yeah, way, you, internal rotation. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it just feels involuntary. Like I have no mm. control over it if I get into that position. And you were mentioning lower body lifting that you wanted to get back mm -hmm. into and you've been gradually getting back into it. What would be yep. the kind of uh, end goals that you'd like to be able to do again? Um, well, my, my main things I would say I would like to, well, I'd like to be able to get my ability to things back um, and be able to do some conventional deadlifting or like Romanian deadlifts, that type of stuff. I have not tried any sort of sumo work since getting the injection, which kind of took it easy there. Um, but I know that with, whenever I was on like ibuprofen and stuff, I was able to do some of that. Um, getting my squat back, like being able to kind of feel, feel I can squat, but it's been primarily lighter weights. Um, and some of that is, some of that's just weakness being deconditioned. Um, mm -hmm. But a lot of, but also as I get upwards into say 175 ish, 185 ish range in terms of weight, I start to kind of like shift over into my left hip mm -hmm. um, and kind of try and just offload my right leg. And uh, if I force myself to kind of stay in it, it'll hurt but it also feels like it warms up and then I can kind of get through it. Um, and uh, like my later reps in a set will, will feel okay. But I mean, I'm also a little, I also feel like I'm a little worried about overdoing it a little bit, like knowing my own tendencies. I'm a, like, I, I do have a tendency to just ignore, ignore and push on. So I don't want to prolong things by, you know, pushing through more than I should. So I'm um, just kind of finding, finding that balance between, all right, let's see how you feel today and working up, but uh, not, not overdoing it there. And I guess last thing would be, I have this oh, hamstring curl leg extension machine over there yes. seated, um, which the current setting it's on is probably, I can't do a full range of motion yet, just so I can't extend my knee from that seated position. Um, and that'd be something I'd like to be able to, to get back to, but mostly like loading my back again um and finding ways to do that comfortably everything's just been not that i'm like avoiding it now it's just been very modified um yes. up to this point so yeah you'd like to get back into full range conventional kind of deadlifts if, if there was to be one exercise yeah 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 that's probably the the main one just because I, that's something i've haven't been able to that's the one thing i think that like i have not been able to even start doing because like you saw like any amount of trying to hinge at all is just kind of a no-go so even like i've tried reducing range of motion and stuff like that and it is just it kind of feels like a waste of my time because i'm mm. working through such a short range but i mean i'll also show you here if i just like put my right leg on the bench here. So it's bent. I mean, I can come in here mm -hmm. just like that, you know? So like I can do it and I can even hinge, like I can control my back position the way I would for a deadlift. Um, but it's like, once that knee gets extended and is every, everything just feels like it kind of goes to shit. That one seemed to be the one that gave you the most range just then out of all the yeah, options. That, but yeah, that, that, yeah, that does. Um, it was kind of just having that knee bent and, you know, I don't know if I need to do maybe a split stance or something or where I can kind of elevate that back knee or something. Maybe that'll, maybe that'd be a good idea. But then I think, well, how am I going to work the other side? 
we get but but uh, but maybe that's just my uh, my ocd kicking in would you be willing to to try it because you read my mind yeah. and if there's ever a king of regressions lateralizations modifications it would be dr jacob harden so super keen to, <laughs> yeah, I'll, try, I'll try it out to see what it looks um, like yeah, some sure. kind of elevated position yeah let's see all right um set that there i got the bench because i know that works i'm really jealous of your setup i just had to oh. say that well i stole it all from my old clinic <laughs> <laughs> so there's that can tell when I, when I bought the new when I closed the old one down opened the new one I took all the old equipment uh, all right okay so this position seems to work well in terms of it feels okay mm -hmm. like I I, I mean it, does, it feels better and okay it, feel, it feels good I don't have any pain with that what happens um, if you were to lean a little bit more to that right side during this motion up Get the hair out of my face here. Sure. All right. So, um, no real issue. So, getting away from this down leg mm -hmm. and more into here mm -hmm. feels yeah. fine. Yeah, feels mm -hmm. fine. I mean, I I can feel my back, but mm -hmm. like it doesn't concern it doesn't concern me. It's uh, not as kind of it's tolerable. It's not as intense as when you showed me the back kind of stretch pulling sensation before. It's not as it's the same sensation. It's just not as intense. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I felt that with, I mean, I felt that with steel rows. I feel it with lap mm -hmm. poles. So like, I'm kind of used to feeling it when I load my back. Um, here, I'll grab a dumbbell here. Let's see how this goes. Uh, so this is 27 pounds. Yeah. Pounds. Yeah. Cool. Do the conversions after. Yeah, right. Just about, I just I just go everything by two. I don't even care about the other yeah. two point two. <sighs> what are you uh, noticing as you, as you do this? Looks great. Uh, you, yeah. Okay. Cool. Feels like a hinge. Yeah. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. It just feels like a hinge. Nothing. Nothing crazy. RP less than two yeah non-existent yeah <laughs> non-existent yeah nada yeah nothing uh and you mentioned yeah, you're so doing then, a little bit of back work you mentioned seal rows and lat pull downs are you doing that at the moment yeah yeah, yeah i've been cool. doing been doing that since uh for the most part since we kind of got since that since it all happened um the seal rows have been a staple I couldn't really do much in terms of like, I have a seated row over there that wasn't working out well too, for me too much early. Um, and to a degree, it's still, if I, if I go really heavy, it gets a little angry with me. I get some, some discomfort with that. So seal rolls have been my main horizontal, um, lat pulls have been my main vertical. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. both of them tolerable. You kind of feel the similar sensation of the tightness in your. Yeah. In my lower back. back. And that yeah. is, like it's right here. Like it's, it's yeah. higher. Mm. Like it, it's, it's, a, it's upper lower back, which I, is what's confusing to me. Mm. Like it's confusing me why it's higher and not like down low. But where the kind of other the, symptoms, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Where the other symptoms seem to be manifesting. Interesting. But, what if you were to, if you're willing to try a little bit heavier with that? Sure. This, I'm not sure we'd, we'd call it. Uh, kickstand deadlift kickstand deadlift yeah all right let's see um all right let me wait this round okay there yep it works there yeah, 
So I'll throw 65 on here. Mm -hmm. About 30 kilos. Yes, I was going to convert it. And you haven't tried this yet? I have not. No, this will be my first time. What are your thoughts? What do you what do you reckon from this one based on what you've tried so far and how are you feeling? Um, I feel confident in it. I think I can do it. That's that's certainly certainly think I can do it. I don't think I'm gonna run. I'm more worried about this weight over here hitting the bench. Ah yes. <laughs> than anything. Uh, so you know what? Let's do this. Getting a step or something. Yeah. Yeah, good idea. A little lower, but Okay, that'll be better. Destroy my shin. <laughs> all right. So we're a little lower now. So we'll just yeah, we're all right. Okay. Let's see here. Mostly just awkward. <laughs> yeah, a bit of a stability with a is it ab mat that you're on? You're kneeling on? Yeah, it's a, it's, it's not the ab mat. I think it's just figuring out my body positioning, having never done this before in my life. Hmm. I'm like, I can't lock this knee up. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, I'm going to throw something on top here. <laughs> How was that, by the way? Tolerable? Yeah, it's tolerable. A little, little more back sensation. Mm -hmm. um, I assume from the load, but oh, that would be better. Mm. Okay. Walk out here. Uh, but yeah, feels all right. So this feels fine. So, can I start? so as I start to pull up on it, I can feel, I feel, I feel my back, mm -hmm. uh, but it is what it is. No hip. <laughs> Do a couple more. Okay. What are you noticing as you're going through that rep the motion? All my weights in my left leg. Mm -hmm. um, cool. But as I've gone through it, as I go through the reps, I quit noticing my back. What um, do you notice? Feels like I'm working out which is always a plus. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I only feel my back really in that initiation. Mm. Uh, and that might be where that's just the getting going. But as I kind of like go through it, I kind of just let that go. Focus. I think it's just focusing more on the movement and then it feels fine. Yeah, it feels good. Cool. So I mean, it's figuring out how to progress that, I guess. Yeah, if, if you had a, a patient that had a very similar issue and you were thinking of the next progression, what would be the process? There's a few options. Yeah, I mean, everything to me looks like, how do I extend this knee more? Um, so maybe getting some plates behind me. Like a kickstand my... position yeah. elevated in a way? Yeah, like maybe yeah. I put some plates behind me so that I could gradually kind of step it down, step it down, step it down till I eventually just had my, I mean, let me just try that real quick. Yeah, yeah, go for it. I mean, I, ha I haven't even just tried just to see if I can kick stand without the knee bent, but I'll uh, we'll just do it without the, so it would, wait for a second. Yeah. So basically there's this position. I can do that. I can't do that. All right. There we go. If you don't, if you don't mind moving the bench a little bit out of the way so we can see. Yeah. yeah that, how'd that feel? That was fine. Yeah. Yeah. Wide stances, kind of 
figuring out how to move things around. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll go sideways here. That'll be easier if we can. Yeah, that's probably better. So, oh, Would come on now. Yeah. Tight spaces. <laughs> Would you be able to move the camera back a little bit? Camera back. Yeah. Yeah. Or even down a little bit. Yes. Sweet. The three-year-old's toys here. You mean gym equipment? Yes, gym equipment. That's right. Toys, gym equipment. Yeah, man. He, he's, he's deadlifting 20 pounds already. Oof. Wow. We're working on the – I got him the little training bar. He oh, lifts it now. <laughs> All right. Um, this way better for you, or do you prefer to have the injured let's leg? Get, yeah, let's get the, this way. Yep. As you are. Okay. Go for it. All right. Mostly just trying to figure out my balance here. Mm. Cool. So you can stop if it's intolerable, but we'll do a couple more reps if you can. And Tell me what you're noticing as you're doing it. It's getting a couple little stingy sensations in my calf and knee. Mm -hmm. But it's settled. Cool. So some sensations in the right calf and yeah. knee, like the back like, of the knee, yeah, front of the just, knee. Uh, Front of the knee, back yeah. of the calf. Yeah. That Stingy, was, burny. At which part of that movement? Probably lower half. Uh, down, down in there. Yeah. Oh. That's where I feel the most. Um, afterwards, little two out of ten, something, something. Yeah. Top of the hamstring, but nothing that I would... Nothing I would take notice of if we weren't talking about it. Sure. Yeah. So one thing we don't know is the future and how you'll pull up tomorrow. Absolutely. Now, as, as long as you're willing to try all these things. So far, like I've seen that it looks balanced. It's already hard to balance the kickstand as it is. Plus it's the first <laughs> time you're doing it. So I don't expect pounds, 225 pounds for this one. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, I would probably fall over. Uh, which would be great for the camera, but uh, yeah. yeah. At the moment, what do you think is going on? What What do you think is happening with this process? Um, in, in the process in terms of just the injury overall. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's healing. I think it's getting better. I think it's calming down. It's just uh, it's just gonna take time. You know, and that's the real, that's a realization I've just had to come to. I've just kind of had to shift my thought process away from getting through it to just living through it and figuring out how to carry on um, because it's going to be here a while, which I fought for, I fought for a good, a good time, <laughs> a good while, um, that idea. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this was good. This is a, I'll probably give this a go. I have a lower body tomorrow, so I'll probably do a full kind of ramp up on it and see how it feels and i'll shoot you a message for let you know how it goes yeah that'd be good and you've got um a few other things jogging as well just be curious whether or not we have a, yeah. another video console it's up to you but yeah just curious to see how you find yeah, it um would you like to have a bit of a assessment like the test oh uh, sure yeah don't have to do a marathon sure. or anything but um <laughs> i mean i can go back and forth here through the yeah. gym would um landscape yeah mode, right. yeah let me if possible sure yeah what were you doing running wise before the injury um upwards of three four miles yeah that works maybe just a little bit lower yes Okay. Yeah, so it, I ran around the house a little bit earlier today. Okay. There to there we go. Okay. Um I'll give you an idea. Yeah. So 
as I'm going through this, I feel, um, I'm not feeling. Every time I run through and I hit there, I'm getting a jolt mm -hmm. in the hip. Um, enough to, and it's enough of a jolt to make me think about the jolt every time it happens. Um, and that, I mean, that's the main reason I feel like I can't run a whole lot mm -hmm. is, and then I kind of, if I were to exaggerate it, I feel like I kind of like stiffen up and like, I kind of like feel like I'm like swinging my leg around like this. Um, I had to chase a ball on the beach one back two months ago. And like, that's literally what I was doing. I was like swinging my leg around as I was trying to run. Um, but I'm normally a pretty midfoot striker mm -hmm. as well. And having a hard time kind of staying hmm. in that midfoot. Like I feel like my foot just wants to collapse under me. Hmm. When you're um, going back to that more of the, almost like the conventional yeah. kind of plane. Yeah. That kind yeah. of swing through. So yeah. So where normally I want, you know, normally I would kind of land that keeping that foot underneath me. I feel like I'm just having a hard time absorbing that. Hmm. It's probably the best. And I mean, I've tried pogo hops. Um, and I find myself wanting to get away from it pretty immediately because the, I don't know if it's the, it actually doesn't feel like it's the impact as much as it just feels like it's the, like I can feel it here hmm. as I just try and move fast. Like my heels aren't leaving the ground, but I feel like I'm just like, I can feel that hip hmm. every time just taking it like for lack of a better view. It feels like I'm taking that inflamed nerve and just shaking it inside, inside there probably not the best view to have but that's kind of like a mental representation yeah interesting so if you were to have that in, if you were to have that like inflamed nerve every single time every single step i imagine you'd want to back it off and yeah yeah but of course i mean i'm i know it's just it's sensitive and so i don't know if i can I mean, if i slow it down i can kind of control it hmm. so what maybe happens that's if you go start. um if you go heel strike or if you go toe strike just out of curiosity let's find out <sighs> what do you notice a little let me do a few more here um so toe toe strike it's definitely that hip feeling. Um, heel strike, less hip feeling, but I'm getting more in that knee. Hmm. What kind uh, of sensation in the knee? What would you call it? It's just a sharp sensation. Like it's not, it's not, it's not the same. It, it feels sharper. It's not a sting. Um, like I've never had tendonitis in my knee, but that's kind of what I would assume it feels like. Interesting. What about the stride length? Have you played around with that already? No. I mean, to be honest with you, I haven't even tried to uh -huh. jog. Yeah. It's, I've, I've just said, all right, I'm just going to ride and row. Um, but we, we can try. Yeah. So wh whatever foot strike you naturally land on with. All the... right. Yeah. All right. So I'll try and length, try and lengthen. Yeah. And there. so far just checking in, it's all tolerable. Oh. Yeah, it's all tolerable. I'm not dying over here so when i go for a longer stride length that's whenever i feel like i kind of like i kind of feel like i'm like hobbling through it mm -hmm. um because i feel like my left leg can like sh open up and stride through and then my left one or my right one i don't know that it's that it can't or if it's that i won't let it but it, it just doesn't feel as free hmm. with the long strides. So it feels a bit yeah, with the long strides constrained. Yeah. And you sure. kind of go out to the side. Yeah. If I were to exaggerate it. Yeah. That's what it would feel like. I feel like I'm kind of trying to pull around it. 
And what do you mean that, by yeah. you're, you're not kind of letting it? You might not be letting it go through? <sighs> like, I just feel like I maybe I, yeah. So like, as I just reach, mm-hmm. I feel that tension start to build mm-hmm. in my hip. Um, and so I don't know if I'm just kind of like putting the brakes on myself and like cutting that stride short and pulling it without allowing it to free up and get out there. Or if it's the, you know, me feeling the pain and then the yes. nerve, like, like it is with the deadlift, you know, my knee just wants to auto buckle. Yes. When you stop yourself, what do you do to stop that range? I don't know. I don't even think about it. Um, it just happens. I feel like I'm dipping my right shoulder. Oh, yeah? I'm going to put you into a front view here. Mm. Maybe you can see a little better. All right. I'm going to open the garage door so we get a little more room. All right. We got a cool night tonight. Yeah. All right. So, all right. I'll just kind of get a run up on it. Yeah. And mindful of the right. obstacles on the yeah. floor. <laughs> yeah. Kind of dipping. I feel like I'm doing my right shoulder. And I feel like I'm like falling into this side. Hmm. And if I run with a bit of a shorter stride, I feel like I don't do that. Like I can control it better. Makes sense. Um, yeah. But then I'm getting that jarring mm. in the hip feeling. Hmm. And, and the shorter stride definitely feels more natural to me. That's what I would normally run with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So this is like me trying to the longer stride. I guess is more if I'm trying to pick it up or something. Yes, you know, almost. So, what if you try this yeah. a couple of things that came to mind? The heel flicks, so more of that knee flexion as you're right. running. Let's see here. All right. Back here. Hopefully the internet connects again. Same. I'm just frozen for a bit. There we go. Frozen. We're back. Yep. Yeah. We're back. All right. I can hear you. Back we're back. All right. So you were saying heel. Yeah, like heel flicks, so like bring you your to heel towards the the bum as you're running. Okay, I like that. Yes. Because by by itself, it's Go for that. It's fine. Got it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. What you notice that uh, time? Give you a side run. By the side here. Yeah. Um. In terms of, it's tolerable. Uh, again, it's just more that rattly feeling through that that through my through my uh, hip. Same kind those. of. Jolting uh, shake. Yeah, it doesn't feel yeah. as it doesn't feel as it doesn't feel as restricted. That's for sure. Um, but it's just it's more like that shortened stride. Mm. It feels like that that just jarring mm. feeling in the hip when you're doing the shorter strides. Yeah, and then whenever I was like kind of trying to get a more of a heel recovery mm. there. Mm. Yeah, it's sore now. I can say that, but it'll settle. Yeah. And you, this is the first time you've done jogging since. Yeah, I haven't even tried. <laughs> yeah, this is the first time. I, I so. share your biases of activity levels and activities to choose resistance training all the way. <laughs> so. Yeah, but I, I mean, I like the I like the cardio. I actually find the you know if I can get twenty five minutes in, getting my heart rate up, I tend to feel better. Um, so I have been trying to do that. Just, I have some kind of lower impact modalities that I've been working with, to, to get it done. I just, yeah, I'd like to get out and run. I'm naturally somewhat decent at it. Mm-hmm. So got to take my wins where I can get them. 
So you're doing the other kind of cardio options in the meantime, but you'd like to get back into the running. Yeah. Like you enjoy it a bit more outdoors and. Yeah, it's just, it's nice. We're getting into the nice part of the year here where, Mm. you know, it's actually not going to be 90 degrees. So it's like the one time that we can actually get out and do these things. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's, I think it's probably the, I mean, what we've gone through with the deadlift and the running is probably the areas that I've, I have struggled the most to kind of come up with my own ideas in terms of how to approach it. Um, so, so this has been helpful to like just explore different, different options. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a few ways that you were doing it that were new, completely new again today with the deadlifts and yeah. the balance points. Yeah, and, I tried. Um, it was interesting. Uh, did you notice much about your kind of t- how you were stopping yourself from getting into certain positions? that kind of um, tension or contraction in terms that... of, in terms of the deadlift or the run in terms of both. Okay. Um, in the deadlift, I really didn't feel restricted at all. Sweet. Um, whenever we have the knee bent. Yeah. Uh, um, and then even with the kickstand really didn't feel restricted. It just felt like something I need to just spend some time with to grease the groove, mm. so to speak. Um, the running, it just, fe- I don't know if it's just, I, again, maybe I need time with it, but it just feels like I'm not comfortable with it yet. That um, kind of like how it is whenever I try and deadlift well, or hinge with my both feet on the ground, uh, it feels like my body's shutting it down. And no matter how I try, it's either I'm not going to move or I'm going to move in some compensated way. Hmm. When you say your body shuts it down, what kind of goes through that process? I noticed the, but you, you do it anyway. I noticed the, the kind of Valsalva, the breathing, holding as you're doing it, which is totally a, a thing you do when you're lifting weights in general. But I'm just wondering mm-hmm. um, what happens? What do you realize, which is probably outside of your control. What do you realize is going on as your body is shutting down? Um, let's just go through it. So go back vertical here. Ah. Yeah, that works. Okay. Um, cool. Here we go. So as I'm kind of going through it, yeah, it's just, So if I'm trying to just be smooth with it, like I'm just trying to just, just move and not think about moving, then essentially that's what happens. Yeah. 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 Yeah, It's just, and boom, I'm going that way. (laughs) What, what do you kind of, is it the tightness in the back? What do you notice first? Like if you were to um, describe the order. Yeah. um, I don't feel the back at all. Okay. I don't feel the back at all. Um, If anything, I'm aware that like, I really don't push my hips back a whole lot. If sure. anything, I'm kind of like twisting my yeah. hips. Yeah. yeah, I'm twisting that hip forward. Um, I noticed that. And then I just noticed that my knee bends. And it honestly, it kind of bends before the pain even gets there. Hmm. It's, it's like it's like protecting. It's like a protective mechanism away from it to some degree. Which um, makes you know, I've sense. noticed the same. Yeah, and you know, I've noticed the same thing when on the leg extension over there is I if I put it, if I like lock it in to do an isometric in kind of a 90 degree flex position, I can get quad output. Like I can push into it, but if I put it at a weight that I can move, then I have, I struggle moving more than 15, 20 pounds. And it's just like my quad won't work whenever it gets close to like that position and so i mean here uh, let's see yes. uh, yeah from that's my knee extension mm-hmm. there this side's good like i can get full knee extension i'm fine there sitting up tall i get a lot less um 
still good here. Mm -hmm. But that's been something that even since I was dealing with the hip pain back in early before all this, mm -hmm. more extension always exacerbated it more than flexion. Mm -hmm. um, and I was finding myself like anytime I would bend down, I was like bracing everything. And, you know, I would, I find myself, you know, put it, making sure I always have a hand on the counter as I, as I go down and stuff, I'm not, or like, I just auto reflexively put a hand on my knee or something. Um, and when I would just relax and let myself move into it, it was, it was okay. It was just like, I don't know, just protective habits, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes they're like at the moment, they're probably very, very adaptive as you're naturally healing yeah, and probably, you're increasing your range of motion. In, I'm just thinking in, in terms of the long term, say two, three, four months time, if you do notice that there are these protective responses, which are completely, you know, not consciously done on purpose, what would you maybe play around with then? I'm curious. Um, probably just the one that I would probably find myself having issues with the most because I've had issues with it in the past when my back has gotten achy is like just letting my back just bending over yeah um is that I, I will notice I start to like flex and brace and kind of just tense and everything um and so I'd probably just find spend some time like allowing myself to go through some of those like flexion motions and bending down and you know different positions and try and uh relax my breathing relax everything so that I don't do that as much um if yeah if I was noticing it whenever I felt like it just wasn't useful for me anymore yeah yeah I think those strategies like I said they're adaptive and they're helpful especially when you're doing weight training it's more so um if you've never ever done it before or you, you haven't noticed that actually oh um when my body stops me it's that's when I'm holding my breath or it's when I'm tensing or it's when I'm doing something involuntarily. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, and I do, and I get patients to do that all the time. I see it a lot with shoulders where it's just guarded, guarded, guarded. And, you know, I get people to just flail their arms around, you know, and then they all of a sudden they're feeling better. So, um, yeah. And I, I know it's not always, you know, it's not always something that you're doing on purpose. It's just, just there, but I mean, I've had trouble in the past kind of just relaxing and letting myself bend for, you know, before. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's not something that we um, really spend too much attention time. On. Yeah. yeah. I mean, with, the, and with this one, you know, here, you know, if I, I've been kind of trying to like lean back a bit more. Yeah. Cause I, so that I can just like get into it. And the first, you know, I'll find kind of a position where I feel comfortable leaning back. Yeah. And then I'll just try and just like kick and yeah. just, you know, kick the ball so yeah. that I get myself away from some of that, just like guard, 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 slow, slow, slow. Um, I try to kind of find the position that I feel comfortable doing it. Yes. Um, so that then I can, you know, hopefully if, you know, if I can do it back here, then, you know, I'll be able to do it sitting here and you know, that hurt a little bit, but, um, you know, work it up as things kind of calm down a little bit so and then from there i'll hopefully be able to hop back on the machine yes. there was some force behind it too yeah yeah it'd be nice to get back into it yeah it's been a while yeah <laughs> I, i'm just done with bfr <laughs> oh, yeah. that, that burn man that's a different kind of thing take homes takeaways from today from what we've been through um some good takeaways in terms of some modifying some movements that I've been struggling with, you know, how I can kind of start to maybe work into that. I'm definitely going to start working into the, the deadlift tomorrow. I'm going to start working on that one. Um, and I'll probably forego, I'm going to forego the sumo deadlift for a little bit just because it doesn't feel like it's something I'm restricted in. And I'd rather work on things that I kind of feel restricted in at the moment. Um, so I'll, I'll probably forego that and put the, the kickstand in here a little bit. Um, and then I think, I don't think I'm quite there yet in terms of feeling ready to jog, you know, with what we did, but I do think that 
just kind of a, working through not kind of just a gradually more bouncy calf raise might be a way to kind of work on that, that jiggling, jiggling the nerve um, in a kind of controlled exposure sort of way. Um, and yeah, uh, th those are probably, those are my big, my big takeaways here in terms of what I can do moving forward and next steps, things I haven't necessarily thought about yet. Cool. Yeah, it sounds like you've got a plan, action plan. Um, freaking sucks to have a five months of being unable to do all the things that you wanted to do, and especially yeah. with things happening. But yeah, so. you've got um, you've got grit. That's for sure. Thank you. I mean, my wife keeps telling me anybody else, any of our other patients, probably would have been on the surgeon's table already. But I'm I'm determined, hmm. determined to make it through. So I mean, I, I I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I part of how I gauge recovery is how many times did I think about calling the surgeon this week? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like there, there's, there, I have my days and like yesterday actually was a bad day as good as today as yesterday was just as bad. Um, and so, I mean, there, there's ups and downs with it still, but it's just more good days, gradually more good days. Hmm. So that's what we're looking for. Yeah. Cool. I think that was, okay. Is there anything that I missed for today? No, no I think, you, I think you, end, reflecting on the process. I mean, you nailed, I think you nailed everything that, that I, I needed allowed me to kind of just get my thoughts out there. Allowed me to vent and, hmm. you know, hear, yeah, it's tough say what I need to say when we're health professionals and we have an injury ourselves and, you know, we don't have that space or, um, we get the, I, I know about your stories. My story is like, oh, I should know what to do. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there, there's a part of it that there, there's been, a, there's a lot of conflicting feelings. I mean, there, there's the idea of, I should figure this out. Um, there is some self, like there's self blame that you go through and like, this shouldn't happen to me. <laughs> I mean, uh, but you know, but then like, I, you know, I talk myself down on that stuff and like this, the stuff happens and I, this is what I tell anyone else stuff happens. Um, but you know, I mean, I've had to, I think the hardest part is I've been through, I've, I've seen two other physicians outside of my wife for this. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, and, and in both of those cases, I feel like I wasn't anything more than a box to be checked. Like there was, there was a series of boxes on a form they needed to be filled out so they could call the insurance and, you know, validate the procedure they wanted to perform. Um, and like, I'm, you know, I was dealing with the pain, you know, I was dealing with pain. It's the, the other stuff and how it's kind of been affecting me that I think I, mean, I was telling Monica, you know, maybe two months ago, I was like, you know, this feels like the first time in my life that I could use a support group because it's, you know, I look normal walking around, but like I'm dying inside at times on my worst days. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I've had times where it's just like, I just feel like I can't enjoy things, you know, like very depressed mood. Um, yeah. And luckily like I found my way through that, but yeah, it's, it's been, it's been rough. Uh, and so like, that's why I, I knew jumping on a call with you, you know, you'd be, you'd be someone who would, I knew this would be good for me, as good for me as it would be for anyone listening and watching it, um, because I know the type of practitioner you are. So I wanted wanted to talk to you. I'm glad, and um, I very much appreciate your your trust. And yeah, I think we all need these safe spaces and support networks. And it seems like you've got some support there with the family. And and yeah, it's it's yeah. tough when you're treated like a number. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, but it makes me have more empathy for those who have been treated that way themselves. So I'm learning something from it. I'm going to come out of this with a positive. So it's, but it's tough. Yeah. So if I, I'm going to make it through, yeah. keep telling myself every day, I'm going to make it through <laughs> just another day. Awesome, Jake. Well, thank you again for, for sharing and opening up your story and exploring some things with some willingness and with some pain. It takes courage to do that. Thanks, sir. And uh, yeah, it would be awesome to keep up to date with how you're going. And if anyone has any questions as well after this video, 
would you be open to answering? And oh yeah, I'll, absolutely. I'll yeah. Ta ta tag me, message me, email me, whatever you want to do. I'm, I'm around and I'm more than happy to, um, more than happy to answer. As I said, I mean, I was telling you before we started recording, I'm an open book. Like don't, don't shy away from asking any questions you want. Amazing. Thanks, Jay. Really appreciate it. All right, man. Thank you. Enjoy your morning over there, I guess. Right. Morning. That's right. All right. All right. Enjoy your day, man.